today is all about fishing ledges. Those shallow parts that drop into deeper water, they're a great place for fish to seek some shelter, cruise up and down and also hunt for a feed when the timing's right. Stands to reason that if you approach ledges in the right way, use a lure that's well suited to the fish you're chasing, you'll catch fish wherever you choose to go, whether it's the salt or the fresh. Today, it's the beautiful parts of the Southern Barrier Reef. Brisbane's about six hours drive that way. I've come out of the coast at 1770. I'm here to chase some tropical critters. Let the hunt begin. First cast of the day. Got here. Beauty. Yeah, beauty. <laughs> Spectacular fish. You can see that their diet is primarily crustaceans and bait fish that are going to just drift across and find their way into the reef. This guy makes his living just sitting somewhere tight and waiting for that food to come to him. At the moment, that soft plastic, little five inch number, bait fish profile, it's exactly what he wants. Get him out, get him up, get him up, get him up. Oh, that was a good bite. There's something very special about seeing that slack line get ripped off the top of the water. There's a fish heads for home. Oh, what do we got here? Trout and up. Yeah. Woo. It's hand over fish stuff when you're fishing for trout. You just gotta be on the go and concentrating so much about watching your line being ready to work hard the moment you get that bite. It's the trick to winning the battles. <laughs> Today my approach is to find good looking ledges that I can often see just based on a colour change in the water, back it up with the use of my sound and then I want to find the best drift along those ledges to put my lure exactly in that spot where it drops off. Now, I've got two plans of attack. The moment we're at the top of the tide, there's very slow drift along this ledge. So I'm using a really subtle presentation. My plan is to put a plastic down there that just drifts into the fish. And then as that current starts to run a bit harder, I'm gonna get a little bit more aggressive. I'm gonna get heavier lures in the way of blades and start putting them down the ledge. And I'm gonna vibrate and hopefully jig up a few fish. But at the moment, it's all about subtlety. Oh, you just gotta get them away from home so quickly. <laughs> Come on, baby, what do we got here? That's all we want to see. What a splendid fish in that light. Have a look at them. This is why so many of us come to the reef to cast lures around in search of these splendid looking animals. With the right approach, you can well and truly tangle with a few of them. Come on, mate, let's get you in. So you can see there's not much of a, a lure left there, visible anyway, he's well and truly scoffed it. It tells you that you're getting your presentation right. The ability to, to pick a good ledge, drift along it and cover a lot of water just gives you the option of showing more and more fish whatever lure you choose to throw. And for me that's the beauty of ledges and getting the, the recipe of how to drift them the right way. You get to play with so many great animals. The tide's just started pushing a little bit harder now. I've opted to move away from that soft plastic, start throwing a lure with a little bit more weight and I've chosen some of these TT one ounce blades at the moment. I've got a box of one ounce, one and a half and two ounce blades. And what that lets me do is fish different depths and also different speeds of current. You'll notice very often when the blades come out of the tackle box, they come with two sets of trebles. Because I'm fishing some fairly gnarly looking reef at the moment, what I've done is taken out that belly treble to make it more snag resistant. Also gives it a little bit more of a darting retrieve, which I quite like when I'm fishing trout because unlike a normal blade retrieve, when you're just using slow lifts and draws, I'm using this as a, as a bit of a mixed jig retrieve, so I'm never taking it far away from the reef. So a bit of a vibration, also a bit of that side to side action in the lure certainly helps the trout tune in on it. Let's give it a whirl and see how we go. Oh, yep, yep. Oh, come on. <laughs> that was a nice bite. When they want it, they come up off that drift and they well and truly bash it. It was very much a classic trout bite, that. And here he is, beautiful. Corner of the jaw, thanks for coming. Welcome to Boat Nige. Voila, another trout on a blade. One of many, many that have entered this boat. Care of a well presented blade. Blades are one of my go-to lures when I'm chasing tropical fish on reef edges. Because of the action and the options they provide to fish them, cast way ahead of your drift. You wanna be fishing that lure back towards you so it doesn't snag up. The moment it hits the water, 
throw your braid onto the top of the water, stop it blowing around in the wind, and then let that lure get down to bottom. Obviously the deeper it is, longer it's gonna take. Slowly keep mending line and stay tight the whole time. That's one of the most critical things I can tell you. Stay tight to that lure throughout the retrieve. And then simply watch. The moment it hits the bottom, that braid will slack. And then it's a case, give it a little jig, hop it up off the bottom, and then quickly wind up that slack line. Most trout hit at the top of that first lift. And it's a very aggressive bite, you can't mistake it. But the key then is just to keep working it back along that reef towards you. Keep it tight, keep hopping it, Anything different, like a slight tap or jerk, lift. Half the time, it's a fish. There we go. Get him up. Come on. Get him up. Far out, they go hard for home. Come on, fella. What we wanted. <laughs> Rattle it up off the reef, paused. They try and, they'll just about rip it right out of your hands when they want it. Come on, Trouty. Oh, there's another great pan-sized trout as well and truly belted a blade. It shows you how opportunistic they are and what they're looking for. This guy's coughed this little bait fish up as he's come into the boat. And I've seen them cough up much bigger bait fish. But it just goes to show you how they behave down there. They're sitting there, little nooks and crannies, waiting for any available food to come past. Anything that looks out of the ordinary, they're going to eat, which is why lures like your blades are such a great option. Fishing these coral edges with lures is all about sensitivity, finesse and a little bit of power. And to do that, I've chosen a certain outfit. It's a seven foot, six to 10 kilo rod. It's lightweight, but powerful. Most importantly, sensitive. It allows me to feel those bites that are being transferred through the braid. Loaded up with a 5,000 size thread line reel, full of braid, very visible braid, 30 pound, and matched off with a 40 pound leader. When it comes to leaders, it's all about balance. You want it to be lightweight, to give that lure a natural look in the water, but you also want it to be strong enough to get fish away from structure. And speaking of structure, good looking ledge coming up. Let's see if I can extract another fish. Yeah. Ah, what have we got here? Just hit bottom. One little hop, and he's conked that. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Aren't they just magnificent? The aggressors of the reef, the coral trout. Just so good at sitting in their space, sitting close to home, out of the current, waiting for anything that happens to just pass by their space and get close enough. Any agitated signals, wounded looking bait that's near them, they're gonna bash it. Beautiful, beautiful sport fish. Magnificent on the plate. Don't they love those blades? Finding subsurface structures, often the key to catching fish consistently. For a lot of anglers, that means using a good set of polarized sunglasses. A lot of anglers these days, however, are carrying around several sets of sunglasses to account for different light conditions on a day so they can keep seeing the structure they want to fish. You don't have to do that anymore. The crew from Spotters have come up with a unique technology and it's called Reload. One frame that allows me to pull lenses crown glass lenses in and out to suit the conditions that I'm getting at any stage of the day. At the moment I've got the copper photochromatic ones that I love in low light. As this day is getting brighter, the glare starting to pick up allows me to go to the green coloured lenses that I love in brighter days. Mirrored coloured lenses is another option. Whatever lens you love in spotters, you're probably going to be able to fit it into these reloads, which is a great option for reducing bulk in your boat and expense. You want to catch your fish in a range of conditions and you love your polarised fishing, check out the reloads from spotters. Get him up, come on, come on. Oh yes, woo, come on, come on. Oh, that's adrenaline stuff. Uh, uh, he's belted that. Just getting down the ledge. Just got that lure to bottom and he's gone clunk. That fish has monstered it. What have we got? Oh, it's not a trouty. It's a big red throat. Woo! Got that for a cracker. Oh, what an awesome, awesome fish. Oh, oh yes. Oh, what a magnificent reef fish. The red throat emperor. And don't they battle hard? 
I picked him for a trout, a big one. He's come up probably a little bit smaller than the trout I thought I might have had. I should have guessed something that pulls that hard. Bound to be one of these critters. Tropical aggressors of the reef, they share some of the rights with the coral trout. They love sitting in tight on those ledges, cruising up and down and just grabbing any likely looking food supply in this case. It's a one ounce tackle tactics blade, just put in the right spot. There you go, the benefits. Finding yourself a good ledge, drifting it in the right way, and just keeping lures down in the front of fish that are likely to be there, looking for a great feed. I'm puffed from that note. Sun's gonna be starting to sink soon. Time to head back to 1770. Got a couple of nice fish for the pan. Then catch up with the crew at Edge on Beaches. Wonderful place to stay. They love having fish fishos there. They love sharing the tales at the end of the day and I've got a few to tell them today. <laughs>